Hello and welcome to Unity Explained. Today we'll be taking a look at colliders. So what are Unity colliders and what are they used for? Simply put, a collider is a component that defines the shape of a game object for the purposes of physical collisions. A collider, which is invisible, does not need to be the exact shape as the game object's mesh. A rough approximation of the mesh is more often than not efficient and indistinguishable in gameplay. The simplest and least processor-intensive colliders are primitive collider types. In 3D, these are the Box Collider, the Sphere Collider, and the Capsule Collider. In 2D, you can use, of course, the Box Collider 2D, the Circle Collider 2D, and the Capsule Collider 2D. An interesting side note is that you can add any number of these to a single game object to create compound colliders. Compound colliders approximate the shape of a game object while keeping a low processor overhead. To get further flexibility, you can add additional colliders on child game objects. When you create a compound collider like this, you should only use one rigid body component on the root game object in the hierarchy. An example of a compound collider being used in actual games is the compound collider of the player in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, where the compound collider is used for hit detection. In some cases, you need something way more precise than a bunch of compound colliders with primitive shapes. In these cases, you should use mesh colliders in 3D space and polygon collider 2D in 2D space. Of course, these colliders are much more processor intensive, so use them rarely and occasionally to maintain good performance. Also, a side note, a mesh collider cannot collide with another mesh collider. You can get around this in some cases by marking the mesh collider as convex in the inspector. This generates the collider shape as a convex hull, which is like the original mesh but with any undercuts filled in. We're gonna see this in our scene later on. The benefit of this is that a convex mesh collider can collide with other mesh colliders, so you can use this feature when you have a moving character with a suitable shape. However, a good rule is to use the mesh colliders for scene geometry and approximate the shape of moving game objects using compound primitive colliders. There's another important thing to note before we move on to the demonstration, and that's triggers. Now, the scripting system can detect when collisions occur and initiate actions using the onCollisionEnter function. However, you can also use the physics engine to simply detect when one collider enters the space of another collider without creating a physical collision. A collider configured as a trigger, using the isTrigger property, does not behave as a solid object and will simply allow other colliders to pass through. When a collider enters its space, a trigger will call the onTriggerEnter function on the trigger's object scripts. So now that we have all of the necessary information, let's go to Unity, check out our props and see how the colliders actually work inside of the editor and inside of the game. So let's start off with the box collider. I'm going to select my box, go add component, search for box collider and hit enter. Once I've done that, you can see that the green lines indicate where the collider's position is and I have this little box collider component inside of the inspector tab. Let's go each element inside of the box collider component and see what we can do with them. The first one is edit collider. Once I toggle it on, I get these little squares that are just gizmos inside my scene view, which allow me to edit the collider size and move it around. But I'm not going to do that as it already fits perfectly. And I'm going to toggle off the edit collider option. The next thing we have is, is the is trigger toggle. Now, as I said previously, this will just allow the object to not detect any collision, but just to detect whether or not another collider entered its volume. So it will not collide with floors, it will not collide with anything, it will just let us know if another collider entered this collider. But I'm going to turn that off for now. The next thing we have is a physics material. Now over here I have a physics material, and to create a new one you just go right click, create, physics material. And once we have it, I'm just going to drag it inside of the physics material slot. Now, you do, need, do, do not need to have this, but it's good to have if you're doing something specific. Inside of the physics material, we can change five properties, the dynamic and static friction, bounciness, and friction and bounce combine. I'm not going to go into great detail about this because it's relatively self-explanatory. Back in the box collider, we have two more parameters. The first one is center, which just allows us to set the center of the box collider. And we have the size, which just basically scales the collider 
depending on the vector input we give it. And that's about it for the box collider. Now all of the other primitive colliders are really similar. For example, the sphere collider, instead of the size, it just has a radius because that's all you need to define a sphere. The capsule collider has a radius, which is the radius of the bottom and uh, top domes. And of course, the height is the distance between those two. And last but not least, we have a non-primitive collider, which is a mesh collider. Now, as you can see, I have selected that it's convex. So why did I do that? Well, as said previously, in order to have a, a non-kinematic rigid body, it has to have a convex mesh collider. Of course, I can turn it off, and then the mesh collider is simply the mesh of the object, but I can no longer have a non-kinematic rigid body to, uh, to use. So I'm gonna keep this as a convex mesh collider. So let's demonstrate adding multiple colliders. Let's say we have this little cube and we want to have multiple colliders on it. I can just simply go and add another box collider. Let's move this one over here and let's resize it. So let's say minus 0.5, not 0.25 in all directions. And let's move this one to 0.5 and put not 0.25 in all directions. As you can see now, I have now two unique colliders on the same cube. And if I just check this quickly and go to play, and I hit space, you can see that the object behaves completely differently because I have two unique colliders on it and it uses that as a compound collider for the rigid body. So this is basically, this is the uh, basics of colliders. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.